Good morning. Uh, this is uh, SWK one, uh, 509, uh, Fundamentals of Research. Uh, in this session, we will go over the research process. Uh, let me start with telling you about the uh, one study we did, uh, Dr. Sagaris and myself. And it is in your... Uh, folder, you can see the research we have done. Uh, we started this way. Uh, Dr. Sagaris met with a mental health counselor, uh, first of all, and then they met with, a, a, you know, one of his supervisors. So they talk about what they did, what they do in their agency. Uh, which was the uh, Department of uh, uh, the Board of Mental Health. So they told us about what they do, how they do it, who they work with. And then once they told us that we, we, were, we were curious, we wanted to know more, and we wanted to, do, to see how we can work with them. So the first start, the first point of our uh, work was to, you know, we had been curious about what they were telling us, that what they told us. We said, what can we do? What will we do? Who are these people who they work with? How do they work with the, those, uh, those people? So the first stage in the research process is that curiosity. We were curious, very curious about what they said, uh, really amazed with what they did. So uh, we started gathering. We are not professionals of mental health. We are faculty members at the university. At the university. So we are trying to, see, to understand better what they do. So we started collecting information on them. So knowing more about the Board of Mental Health, knowing more about the workers who they hire, uh, knowing more about the clients who they work with. So we were curious, we, we wanted to know more. Uh, and then we collected that information. We, we said, okay, these people, we, they gave us a lot of information. Let us see what the problem is. So we formulated a problem. We said, okay, they have um, clients who they work with who, are, who have mental health problems. So let us see who those people are. Let us understand who they are, what they do, where they live, how old they are, what uh, r race, what gender, and so on and so on. So we formulated our problem, and then we uh, said, let us try to do a you know, calculation of how many people, uh, who is older, uh, who is younger, uh, how many age groups do we have? How many African Americans? How many whites? How many Hispanic? How many, and so on. So uh, we detailed our methodology using a qu quantitative methodology. Because here we have to calculate, we have to count, we have to number. So uh, we said it will be a, a, a just an exploratory design because we don't know these people. We will explore, we will check, we will try to know. So the design was exploratory. And then we said, okay, let us go and collect the information. So they gave us 100, I would say 800 more and more uh, names and uh, information on people. So before they gave us the, that information, we told them we don't need names because we applied for, we have to apply for the IRB, Institutional Review Board, to allow us to do this research. So we uh, told them delete all the names so we can use anonymous data. So uh, we, they, get, they deleted the names, they gave us the information, it was uh, in uh, Excel. We had to change everything into SPSS. You know what is SPSS? 
it is statistical package for social science. It's a database. It's a, a, a how would I say it? It's a, um, a, syst um, a program that helps researchers to do their statistics. Okay, so we used the the Excel data to transfer it into SPSS. So we can do the calculation. We could use Excel, but uh, uh, SPSS is more profound, more detailed when you want to go through that. And we foresaw that we would do a lot of work. So we prefer to use SPSS. So uh, once we got the information, we put them in uh, SPSS and we started data, collect, uh, data analysis, analyzing the data uh, to know who are the older, who are the younger, how many people do we have uh, uh, in the, uh, as black, how many people do we have as white, and so on and so on. So we did the, the data analysis. That is another stage, which is uh, seventh in what I will show you. And then uh, once we calculated, we found something. We know how many people were black, how many people were white, how many people were Hispanic, and how old uh, the you know the the age group, uh, the oldest age group, the youngest age group, and so on. So we got our findings, and then uh, those findings we found we put them in a document, and then. Uh, made some recommendation to say uh, these are uh, you know uh, uh, how the comp the composition of the um, uh, of the group we had and uh, we put that in a document which was our research our first research and then we disseminated it we sent it out and it was published now usually in books. They teach you step one, step two, step three until the end. So that is linear. Uh, in my teaching, what I really profess is that uh, you see it as a circle. Because after we made our suggestions, after we said this is what we found, we had some of the ideas that came out because we were saying, okay, what are these people have some mental health problem? What type of mental health problem do they have? Where do they live? Okay? And how are they treated in the system? The workers, the judges. So we started a second research process. That's why I don't want to go you know, follow the books. I, I, I go further. Uh, the books are linear, but I want you to know that the research is a circle. Because after, at the last point where you made your suggestion, you, have, you may have some new ideas that you would want to investigate again. So it would know, start a new process of research. So that's why I, uh, the design I am teaching you, the process I'm teaching, is a circle, it's not linear. So let us go through those different uh, stages, those different points, you know. I am showing you here the whole process. You can see stage one, stage two, stage three, until uh, stage nine. Uh, even last year, one, uh, some students were, after they found this, they said, oh, there is a tensor one, because we could, uh, uh, you know, uh, not only publish, but also go in the field. And so there are, this is what I teach, but you, you may be inspired to add another, you know, stage, as long as it is a circle, because it cannot be a a line, a straight line. Okay, so I detailed it in my presentation. Now let us go through each point. Curiosity. 
uh, this one, uh, I, for example, I'm going, um, uh, you know, when we get that information, we are wondering what is going on. We ask a lot of questions. We are, you know, puzzled with something. For example, another example I can give you. I came from Africa. I have never been exposed to people who are sleeping on the street, who do not have anywhere to go who have their luggage around, so you see those homeless around. I come here, I get into the bus, into the, the train, I see people who are, uh, you know, at the uh, train station waiting and with their luggage. So I'm saying, what is this? What, who are these people? Uh, in this big country, who are they? They are, don't have, I was told homeless. I have read about homeless, but I couldn't imagine that extent in this country. So I am wondering, what is going on with these people in this big country, rich country? How are they sleeping on the street? They don't have where to go. So I was curious. It was surprising to me. Even if I read it, I couldn't imagine the extent of how it was. So I am curious. The second one, I'm saying, second stage, I'm saying, uh -uh. I, I have to know more about this because this is a phenomenon that I, 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 I am not sure I know well. So I'm getting some documents to read about homelessness, about uh, what happened, about who they are, and so on. I try to get more information to learn more about homelessness. Okay? So uh, I get books. I get articles on uh, homelessness. Who are they? I get hundreds of articles. I read more and I take note of what they tell me. I learn and I said, I, you know, take what is most important to me. So that is that uh, point, what we call the literature review. We review the literature, what has been written about them. We put them into a document and so we can synthesize it. It's a lot. So we synthesize and have a, a two pages of ideas on uh, homelessness. Okay? And then I said <laughs> uh, this is a lot. I need to see what is the problem, a small problem, so I can analyze, I can know more, uh, you know, start with it. So I said Okay, let me just try to know who they, these people are. So, a simple process to know who are they. Are they black? Are they white? Are they young? Are they old? Are, are they women? Are they men? And so on and so on. So I try to say, I need to know to identify these people. Identification. Just descriptive. Describing people. Okay? So, uh, I needed for them to say what, uh, sorry, uh, what is the methodology I'll be using? Because uh, I will start with counting them, with, with knowing who these people are, how many do we have? So uh, it will be a quantitative method. I will count. I will not try to say, oh, these are black people and uh, these are white people. Uh -uh. I want to know how many black people, how many white people, how many uh, Hispanic, and so on. So count. Quantitative method. Okay? But uh, then I would say in quantitative method, it is new thing I don't know. I'm just exploring. I'm just and describe these people. Who are they? Describe them. So uh, the design will be Explore. I will explore. Explorative design. Exploratory design. Or describing. I will be describing them. Or descriptive design. Okay? So, because this is new to me, I, 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 I don't go deep into the process. I want to just know who they are, how many they are. So, I count. Okay? Okay, now uh, I 
go around the city now. I'm going around Cleveland. I'm going around East Cleveland, West, uh, you know, in the West. Uh, I'm going everywhere and try to get info to, to see where those people are. I may contact an agency that works with uh, homeless people and that agency can give me more information. But myself, I may be walking around and counting and dating, getting the information. That is what is called the data collection method. I start to collect information, to collect uh, you know, information on those individuals I am working, I am planning to work on. Okay? Data collection. And then after I collect that, the information that I wanted to, to get, I will do an analysis. I will now start counting. I will now start to separating. I will start now to know more about uh, the groups and so on and so on. That is what is called the data analysis. And I would say I start doing the statistics. I start doing the counting. I start doing the numbering. Who are these? How many do we have? So that is uh, the data analysis stage. Okay, from that point now, after I calculated, I get my finding. I now know how many are white, how many are black, how many are, and so on and so on. I have the numbers now. That is what is called the findings. I know who they are, how old they are, how young they are, and so on and so on. That is the information, and that I start writing everything that I know about them. Okay, so that is the, the finding. But once I finish my finding, I will uh, put that in a document and then send it out, okay, uh, for publication. Uh, and uh, once it is accepted for publication, uh, in that pr process, I would have to make suggestion. I would have to say, okay, uh, these uh, homeless are more located in most of the, many of them are located in the east side. So maybe we need an agency in the west side. Okay? I may find that many of them are in the east side. I may suggest that uh, an agency be uh, implanted in the, in the east side. So I make suggestions and I write everything in a document that m will be published and from there, uh, it will be disseminated. Everyone knows about what we found, about where most uh, uh, homeless are, what they, uh, you know, what they look like, who, you know, what are the races, and so on and so on. Okay. But what happened after this? I am not surprised. You know. Uh, satisfied. I want to know more about these homeless I found. I may want to know where do they get their treatment, their service, where are they served, where are the agencies located and what the, the agencies are doing with those uh, homeless. So it would be a new research that I will start. You see, I am starting a new research. I may, and that's what happened with Dr. Sagaris and myself. On that top, topic of mental uh, illness, mental uh, health, uh, you know, intellectual disabilities, we wrote three articles. The first one was just to, to identify who were those clients, who were those uh, mentally ill people who had, Ill, uh, you know, that, uh, that issue, who are working, who uh, the, the Board of Mental Health uh, are serving. And uh, once we know who they are, we say, okay, let us try to know where they are located. So we did a study, we entitled uh, Ge Geographic Information uh, System Location of, these, uh, of the Clients. So that was the second paper. So we did the same study on those same people, and we found that some were located in the east side, some were located in uh, the middle. Uh, we called them those, uh, we took them as uh, uh, circles. 
So we were in the outer, the middle, and the inner circle. You know, zones, three zones. Zone in the middle in, of Cleveland, of Cuyahoga County, and then in the, you know, in the periphery of uh, that uh, circle, and then in the outer circle. So we had three zones where those people were located. And each or in each of those zo uh, zones, we had different types of problems. Uh, the people who were in the, in around Cleveland were more uh, likely to be stealing and doing certain crimes. Uh, the outer were doing some other type of crimes. So we were able to see what type of crimes were proper, uh, you know, uh, mostly committed in each of those zones. The third article we, we wrote was about how are they treated by the justice system? Because some judges are trained in mental health. Some are not. The one who are trained in mental health know the, what to do with this type of clients, of, of offenders. So m they are more likely, we found, we did a study, and we found that judges who are trained are more likely to put those offenders in community service, community, you know, uh, supervision. They do not put them in jail because they know that these people need other people to help them, to support them, to, you know, look after them. But the judges who are uh, not trained in mental health were more likely to put them in jails. And, you know, in jails, they do not have the support. They do not have the, 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 the you know, the, 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 an atmosphere that helps them. So they commit more crimes. They com once they get out, they commit more crimes, and they go back again. And that's what we call, uh, you know, usually they are put on probation, and then they commit a, what they call technical offense because they didn't, uh, you know, report to their, uh, of, uh, their probation officer, and they are put back in jail. Those people cannot, you know, uh, behave, you know, as expected always. So those judges are more likely to put them in jail, and that's another problem with, with that, of, uh, that uh, co uh, community. So uh, that is the third article we wrote on that. You see, from one uh, research, we created another problem, another research, and then a third research, so three papers on the same people for, uh, you know, at different stage, different type of research. So that's why I, I recommend uh, and I profess that instead of a linear uh, research process, that we really, you know, go through uh, a circle instead of linear process. Thank you.